All right, so for those of you who are a little bit confused on how we get ATP to ADP, I went ahead and videotaped this for you. So the first thing that you need to go ahead and recognize are what are each of these sections of each of the molecules called. So first of all, we've got three phosphates, so we're going to call that ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Down here, we have a DP, and you see how this says tri, we've got one, two, three. Down here, we've got a DP, so adenosine diphosphate. So I messed up, and this one phosphate should not be there. So we've got two phosphates down here, we've got three phosphates up here. You need to identify what each of these structures are. So up here, we have adenine. This is adenine down here, too. We have ribose. And ribose is just a sugar. And then we've got each of the phosphates. These two molecules are almost identical. The only difference is the number of phosphates. So I want you guys to think of ATP like a charged phone that's not quite on. Okay, so between each of these phosphates, we have energy, okay? So each of these fire bolts are representing energy. So it's like your cell phone's off and it's just sitting there. What do you have to do to actually be able to use that cell phone? You have to turn it on. Well, what happens is, is in order for us to use ATP, we need to kick one of these phosphates out. So one of these phosphates is going to be released and when that phosphate is released, then we release that energy that was stored between that bond. So energy is also released. Once we have this phosphate released and the energy is released, this phosphate ends up just being kicked out and we are left with the cell adenosine diphosphate. And that's how we get the two phosphates. Now, these phosphates also have energy between them, but it's not fully charged. We can't use this energy. So this stays in the cell until we get energy again to actually make ATP. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how to actually make ADP into ATP. So what we do is we have to add A phosphate and over here when we release that phosphate we released energy so how are we going to get this phosphate actually bonded on here we need to actually have energy to do that we're going to get more in depth on this when we talk about cellular respiration but what I need you guys to understand is the way that ATP stores energy is in the bonds and in order to retrieve that energy that phosphate needs to be kicked out this bond right here then releases energy and we are left with adenosine diphosphate.